I'd like to welcome everyone here. Thank you so much for being here today. We have a, a, a great speaker, medical laboratory scientist, Sally S. Cherry. Here is Sarvana Halen, and I uh, want to welcome her here today. She's been working in uh, Second Life, both creating laboratory experiences for students to learn and uh, become interested in laboratory work, as well as uh, public health experiences. And she's also worked all over the world as a medical laboratory scientist, helping people come up to speed in Turkey, Kenya, Egypt, and Uganda. We're honored to have you here today and just uh, glad you're able to share some of these experiences with us. In particular today, working on where artificial intelligence is fitting in with things and uh, how it's going to uh, amplify our work and uh, where we're getting started. So thanks so much for being here. If people can also uh, look into the uh, chat, then you'll be able to see there uh, the link for the live stream. The live stream will have closed captioning on it. So if you want to check out the captioning uh, uh, there, then uh, please check out the link that Val has posted there. Thank you, Val. And uh, if you are having trouble with the microphone, you can always move your camera a little bit forward or sit in a more forward chair if you uh, have trouble hearing. And uh, just uh, really appreciate having you here. So thank you so much for being here, uh, Sarvana. Greetings. Greetings, my name is Sally Cherry. I'm a medical laboratory scientist who uses 3D virtual worlds and AI for training information sharing. Well, today I'm pleased to share information and my experiences as related to the educational use of Genitive Artificial Intelligence, AI, and 3D immersive virtual worlds. My virtual based AI experience started within my kindly hosted AI art gallery world called ShareNet Creative HQ which is focused on the integration of AI art and NFTs into 3D immersive virtual worlds. The experience led to the creation of AI generated training resources for virtual as well as my, my physical world learning sessions. As is widely known within our community, it's 3D emerging virtual worlds hold significant importance due to their ability to provide interactive and realistic experiences for education, professional training, reviews, and research. Their ability to foster collaboration, creativity, and explorations make them a valuable educational tool. The integration of generative artificial intelligence enhances taking and it enhances it and takes the learning experience to another level. Next, oh, thank you, Val. Some people say, well, what is AI? What is genitive artificial intelligence? Basically, it's known, it's known that you may hear the term genitive AI, or you may, you may hear gen AI, but it's a subset of artificial intelligence under the category of machine learning focus on developing algorithms and models to generate new content. And I'll be probably using Gen AI most of the time because it's shorter. Um, learns the, it learns the underlying patterns and structures of the provided training data, and it can generate new data based on what has been fed, what's been provided to it. So you may say, well, what's the difference between AI, generative AI, and regular AI technologies? Well, number one, traditional artificial intelligence was found as an academic, academic discipline back in 1956. Some people may think, oh, it just appeared. No, it's been here for a while. Traditional AI techniques are focused on receiving preset input and producing output based on predetermined rules and algorithms. Now, some common applications include voice assistants such as Google Assistants, web search engines such as Google Search, and even self-driving cars. On the other hand, generative AI such as chat bots and AI image generators focus on creating new content. 
such as text, images, video, audios, and 3D virtual worlds, 3D models, I'm sorry, 3D models. Now we ask ourselves the importance of genitive AI. Genitive AI allows educators to create personalized virtual experiences based on the need of a, of a student or even a group of students or any type of learner that may be in the learning environment. In addition, genitive AI can be used to create virtual objects that can enrich the immersive experience. They can be used to create realistic simulations to help students explore and learn in a safe and immersive environment. Now the roles of the Gen AI and 3D virtual worlds, as in the physical physical world, I do my main focus is integration of 3D virtual worlds with my a lot of the tools I use in the real world. AI, Genitive AI is one of those tools I've used in the physical world that I've taken into the 3D virtual world. As in the virtual physical world, the potential use and applications for genitive AI are increasing daily. Genitive AI continues to drive innovation in the content creation, simulation, and creativity. Within the 3D virtual world, it may be employed to enhance the process of creating virtual content. This next slide, please. A growing, <clears throat> a growing number of physical world and virtual based educators, scholars, and teachers are using genital AI to create educational, cultural, and historical content. They use it for storytelling, to tell stories of the past and the present, even futuristic events, and to amplify the voices of learners in the virtual world as well as the physical world. Next slide. Benefits of genitive AI. Now, gen okay, we're talking slide five. Um, general um general benefits of using genitive AI in three D virtual worlds. Number one, it reduces time, cost and resources required for creating diverse and detailed 3D assets. It produces a wide variety of virtual objects, landscapes, textures, and characters, populates three of virtual worlds with rich and a diverse content more efficiently, assistance in automating re repetitive tasks, and focuses on more complex, you can focus on more complex and creative aspects of virtual world development. That's coming from the, I would say the office side. Um, I am a company of one. So I need that it's a, it has been a benefit for a company of one or a small nonprofit. Educational benefits. We, number one, personalized learning. Genital AI can be used to create personalized learning experiences for learners. For example, AI generated content can adapt and respond to users' actions and creating personalized and engaging experiences. Rapid asset assets creation. Genitive AI can be used to rapidly create 3D assets for virtual worlds. For instance, several AI research projects have been launched to help creators across industries unlock new possibilities with genitive AI. Number three, improve 
learning outcomes. Generative AI can be used to improve learning outcomes by creating realistic virtual objects that enrich the virtual learning experience. And number four, new forms of art and entertainment. Generative AI can enable new forms of art and entertainment and communications, pushing the balance of what is possible in the virtual learning environment. And let me now genital AI as an educational tool. Since 2008, my greatest passion as a virtual world resident and builder has been and is still researching, curating, and sharing educational information within the physical world and, and various 3D virtual worlds. It fuels the ongoing search for tools to enhance the user experience within the 3D virtual world. So indeed, a well-stocked virtual world toolbox helps to keep the virtual learning experience engaged and realistic. My virtual world toolbox contains an assortment of tools to assist in the task of enhancing the understanding of educational resources, elevating the use of 3D virtual worlds through engagement, educating others about the use of 3D virtual worlds, and evaluating the results. As it's been reported, Generative AI has become a powerful tool employed to create diverse and high quality educational content for 3D virtual worlds. The newly created content may be for sharing specific information, storytelling, visualizing an ideal or, or data, even writing lesson plans, generating virtual environments, designing, designing customized training data, generating non-player characters, upscaling textiles, text, textures, and other applications. Next slide. That will be six. Recently, I used Genitive AI to enhance and create educational content for a 3D informational exhibit about the history, cultural, cultural roles, and importance of jute joints in the blues and jazz era. Hence, Genitive AI have been added, has been added to my virtual world toolbox. It is my hope that the sharing of information about Genitive AI will encourage its use as an educational and research tool. Genitive AI can be considered, well, I do, as an educator's assistant in the classroom, lab, or wherever the educator may find themselves. Genitive AI was used to generate, with this exhibit, Genitive AI was used to generate time period images to enhance the visualization of the educational presentation. Several Genitive AI tools, <clears throat> excuse me, were used to create detailed building blueprints, landscape layouts, signage, and murals for the authentic historical setting that was on display. Now this picture, you, the image that you have there shows, this is the, shows the prompt that I use to get the images that I wanted. I wanted to, it to show me what jute joints looked like during, I think I put in 18, 60s during the 1860s and so i would have a guide to go by when i went to build the, the uh, structure the gender ai tools were text to image ai generators and i use i use um, night cafe and sometimes and story ai applications it gives me a variety of algorithms and models to use and generative ai chat box there are numerous text to image AI generators and applications apps available for potential users. The use of generative AI enhances the, enhance the actual planning, designing, 
and the building process of the historical structures and landscapes, as well as it saved valuable time during the entire uh, process. The genital AI was used to gather genital AI chat bouts. Now I use the text to image for to get a, a visual picture, a visual um, description of the structures. I went to genital, uh, genital AI chat bouts to gather detailed descriptions of the interior and the exterior of the jukeboxes during the blues and jazz period. No. A specific detail, a specific and detailed text prompt or message is the key factor in creating your desired results. You have to tell exactly what you want. Sometimes people say, well, what I got, that's not what I put it. You have to tell it what you want. And pretty much every now and then you may get something that's a little off, but you have to tell exactly what you want. And I may have a next slide. Now with this, this I, again, the chat bout, I'm going to have some examples here I want to share with you to see how I'm using AI. Now with this chat bout, I just I went to the chat bout and asked the question, explain the difference between GPT-3 and chat GPT. And this the mess, the results is the mess information it gave back to me. So basically with the chat bouts, you ask the question, present something, um, put in a question, request information, and this you get a result, getting your results back. I can see this very much a big tool, valuable tool in the classroom or in the educator's toolbox. Next slide. Now, because I was preparing this presentation, I use a text prompt, use a generative AI for education and 3D virtual, immersive virtual worlds. And these are some of the images that I receive. Now, imagine an educator doing a presentation or preparing a, um, pre a, their lesson plan for their classes, and they need some images to put into that lesson plan or to put in, in the material they may be put together for their students. They would not have to worry about trying to find that particular, what they want that, um, and not find it usually when you go to Google it. AI will give you pretty much what you're looking for. I put in, I think the education put the um, students in a classroom. It put the AI there. Now my middle friend here, I think she came in just peeling for the AI. I love her. She's she has sitting in her carrying you into that AI mode of thinking. And with the last, the third picture, young man's at the computer in the classroom. So basically what you tell them that what you want, and it's gonna pretty much give you if you give a specific detail, you have to tell it what you want. In addition, the digital images generated with the assistant G, uh, AI provided an immersive learning experience. And that was when I did the the exhibit. I also use the, and it can be used very well when you're doing presentation. I use the gen AI generative music theme murals and backgrounds were incorporated into the gathering spaces and the exhibit I had to create a sense of walking through time as time advanced forward into another time period. Now, again, if you need a certain background or backdrop for theater, or for whatever, you can tell it what you want and you can create your background. So you need a background for your book that you put together or some presentations, or you might want to have a background for a poster presentation for an exhibit or at a conference. You can go in and create your background with what you want. The tools used for AI content. Oh, wait a minute, let me go back. I, I have a couple more, I forgot. Next slide, please. I try to come up with, now for my anatomy, physiology instructors, the biology instructors, 
I went in not to ask it to give me a 3D res respiratory system of a human body. Now, taking note, and I think I have it later on, I noted it later on, you always want to fact check and fact check your images or whatever you get back. Fact check your text messages, your text results, fact check your images to make sure they're accurate. Now, I would, before I would use this, I would advise the instructor who generated this to go back and make sure that this is representing the 3D respiratory system of a human body. Next slide. Now, I medical laboratory week is something big that we celebrate in the uh, observe in the medical laboratory. So we're gearing towards young, uh, young men and women uh, at an early age um, to get interested in STEM. Um, and my from my part of the world, medical laboratory science. So I decided to go. I went in and I generated a a um, image using the text prompt. I told I want a digital airbrush artwork because i want to use this as maybe as a poster but we go out to talk to schools school children i want to be able to use it as maybe even a um, book cover when we put together maybe some um other maybe some um craft books for the students the full prompt was digit digital airbrush artwork featuring a female african-american chibit medical laboratory scientists wearing a lab coat sitting at a binocular microscope with bacteria in the background now i told exactly what i wanted now if i look closely at this and you look close at this this is one i would not be able to use or i would use it to say as a as a thing with it as a game with the children what's wrong with this picture number one it did not recognize when i said binocular microscope and this is one of the things you have to double check it put my uh, my scope my eye pieces separate which they should be beside each other and the back to the pink bacteria that's on the counter there it should be in the culture bottle that's at the left hand side of the medical laboratory scientists in the picture again ai can help you generate images you need to present or visualize visualize some a comp a ideas and data to your your learners. The tools, while it's a growing number of, and then with these, those examples I just showed you, I basically use three major tools. While there's a growing number of generative AI tools, chat bouts, text to image AI generators, it's important to choose the right tool that fits your content creation needs as well as its ease of use. The source of the AI training data, um, the quality of AI generated content, accuracy of AI generated content. Again, I said with the microscope here, that's why I want to point that out. The microscope, I, if, if I said a monocular, I'm curious to see what it would give me that will work with a monocular. I, have, I will have to do some editing on that particular image. You should check to see if the Gender AI offers a free trial version or even an educator's plan. I've, from time to time, you may come across software that have a special discount and have a special program for educators, Those are, they may just say teachers, or it may have a limited free version that will give you, allow you to test it before committing to a paid subscription. I usually try to test for whatever time they give me before I commit myself to the paid subscription. And I said before, you should fact check any gen AI generated content for accuracy. I tell people, count the fingers, count the hands, count the arms, and in some cases you have to count the legs because that's when I'm doing my close-ups and asking for pictures of various people. I always, first thing I look at is the number of fingers. Six fingers, it's a reject. But you want to always double check your images or what's created and your your text com, um, results to make sure it is accurate. Now, for the exhibit that I was mentioning earlier, I use several text image generators and generative AI con, um, chat bouts. 
I use them as I come my research and for the content creating tools. In other words, they're my assistants. Now, one of those assistants I use is an app called Night Cafe. It's a text to image AI generator platform that offers users to allows users to use ver various machine learning uh, algorithms, including stable diffusion and dollar E2 to generate images based on user provided text prompts. It had and one thing uh, one reason I like this, it has a nice it has a community. We we share images back and forth. We make comments, and we have there's quite a few teachers in there from from for what some of them would when we chat up. But it's a community to share images, give tips to each other. But this is um, that what suits me. This is what I wanted. Now, there's some of my colleagues may use another uh, pl uh, app platform, but my what works has been working for me for some sense. I guess it's about two years now is I started out with Night Cafe. Now I discovered I would like to have a backup and I found Story Story uh, uh, AI. Now it's a, again a uh, did I leave? It is a text to art generator that allows users to select specific aspects of the AI generator images to personalize it. You can choose different art styles, which most of them allow you to do, canvas sizes and aspects ratios to truly make your artwork unique. And it allows you to change the image size and colors. I use that for the um, my logos for my exhibit during um, Open Sims Community Conference. I The colors just pop and I like the images that it gave. Now the, the another uh, generator, those were platforms, uh, is the text to image AI generator has the ability to generate photo style realistic people. And this is stable diffusion. I find myself using that most of the time. This AI art generator uses a special model that learns to generate human faces from training data. Because I do generate um, face structures and uh, characters to fit my um, stories that I write. I have found myself using stable diffusion. Now, far as my chat bout, I found myself going to chat GPT. And this is based on conversation, uh, conversation bout used for adding, used by adding a detail text prompt to generate text content. It can be used to generate lesson plans, manuscripts, articles, strips, stories, and more. You might even find yourself, matter of fact, taste, we tested it, um, team of us tested it, um, generating to generate a manuscript. We was writing a manuscript and, my cha and we did chapters and each of us took one, try and piece it together. So you can use that chat to basically to help to be your assistant with you authoring pr presentations. Now I cannot discuss AI without talking about some of the challenges. And that is, can we go to next slide, please? Pro the challenges in creating content for three D virtual worlds. The primary challenge was creating the detailed text prompts needed to provide the desired generated results. I see I have, I'm fine tuning my my prompt writing skills. And you have may have seen that quite a few people have started to focus on prompt writing. That prompt writing is that foundation. It's what's gonna, it's the I guess the seed to the soup of your whatever content you're gonna be generating. Due to the fact that AI generated content may not always be high quality and may contain errors or artifacts, some of the generated content require, required editing while some were not used in exhibits or not used period in my presentations or in my work. 
In addition, is constantly AI is constantly changing and new tools are emerging every day. And another challenge is staying up to date as possible. Um, you cannot we not cannot be everywhere, but just trying to stay up to date as possible. Now I have found that hybrid grid business have a section on AI. I go over to over to it from time to I go over to it's one of my 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 also my reading list to see what information they have up there as they talk about AI in the 3D virtual world. Now one of the main challenges, concerns, ethic concerns about generative um, generative AI. When generative AI holds great while it holds great promise for creating content in virtual worlds, there's also some consideration that might be ad be addressed. These ethic considerations surrounding the use of AI content include number one, potential bias in AI generated content. When I first started using AI, um, um, image, text to image, the images that I was getting was very derogatory, especially with women. Um, and I had to go back in and put in, like you saw when I put, can we go back to slide? 11. You notice that says slide 11. When I say a female medical laboratory scientist, I often get other um other uh, nationalities of medical laboratory scientists. I may get a Caucasian, I may get an Italian, but I observed first I was getting an African-American. So I found myself going back and I, and most often I would get males. So I've learned to go back and say, I want a female, I'll say female or woman, African-American, and I may say Italian, it depends on what group I'm working with, because I like to have my images that I've used and when I talk to young students that they look like them. I would say medical laboratory scientist, because that's the full term. I, you have to be careful when you still want to say medical lab tech, because you don't know what you're going to get. We, we used to use the term medical technologist, but now that's been used from other uh, occupations. So we put in our full official title, medical laboratory scientist, to make sure we get that. I stayed for it to be wearing a lab coat. Now I started out with a, wearing a white lab coat. Then of all the images I got, they were all white. So I guess it was trained on knowing that lab, thinking knowing that lab coats are white, although we do still have some other colors in the lab. So I dropped the white. I didn't uh, need that additional number word count, a letter count. And I told she should be sitting at a microscope. Well, I said binocular, it gave me, we're working on that one. Setting at the at microscope, setting at a microscope, and I want a nice background. So I said bacteria in the background. So specifically, I went down and said exactly what I wanted to see in the image. So this is one of the things that you, when you, as you're creating your your um your images, you want to be sure you you watch how it portrays what you're asking for, because it will have potential biases in the AI content. The presence of biases and discrimination reflected in the AI content. If the provided genitive, genitive AI training data is biased, <laughs> what you think? The newly generated content will also be biased. So that's one of the things we kind of keep an eye on that. And we know we can have some other problems. Potential misuse of the gentle AI technology. Individuals, some individuals and groups may be um, may be used to harm, may use it to harm someone by generating false information, such as fake news or deep fakes and other false information. Misuse is nothing new. People say, oh, because of AI, they're, you know, they're generating this, generate that. A, um, false news, false information has been around. It's just that AI has increased its occurrence.
Ensuring the responsibility and fair use of genital AI. That's another ethic concern. Protecting the right of intellectual property rights and verifying the authentic authenticity. Yeah, got a little tongue twisted there. Of AI generated content. You want to make sure that the content that you or the information you're getting is true information. Like I said, yes, people can change some things up, but you want to make sure with information before you release it. I do I kind of do a bit Google search to back up my research uh, just to make sure it's on key. So in conclusion, using digital AI in 3D emerging virtual worlds is important for educational purposes because it can generate personalized, engaging learning experiences, improve learning outcomes, and enable new forms of art and entertainment. It is hoped that you explore genitive artificial intelligence as an educational tool in your learning spaces. Thank you for your interest and your attention. My vision for the work I do is, for some of you may know, is real to virtual, virtual to real. This is where anything that's going on in the real world, some aspects of it, can be brought into the virtual world. And the virtual to real is based is my contacts and my collaborations, my networking that I have done, made in the, in the virtual world, can be taken out into the real world. So this is the part of the virtual world, the real to virtual, virtual to real team that you see here. I'm an open simulator. I am I, an open simulator. I go by my full name, Sally Cherry, because I train in there as a medical laboratory scientist and I um, have meetings in there. So I am, I wear my Merlin flag proudly. That's in Kitely and an open sim community conference. Again, I'm Sally Cherry. In Second Life, I'm Savannah Helen. And it was a delight to meet, present with you today. Now, if you have any more information, you'd like more information about my projects or my portfolio, it's linked tree slash real to virtual to real. Thank you again. Any questions, comments, feedback, who think they're gonna be using, who think they're interested in using the genitive AI for their educational presentations, even lesson plans. We writing a manual right now for on a particular lab procedure. So I'm testing to see how much the AI can follow the medical procedure and follow it accurately. Okay. The Jazz present a project was done at Open Sim Fest 2003. And our theme was blues and jazz. And as a matter of fact, I have a I am opening up a gal a follow up gallery to showcase some of the artwork I did um, based on that. Night Cafe has two. You can you have a paid um, version of it, and you can have a free version. Now you can go in there and sign up, and they give out five free credits a day. I think around seven o'clock, eight o'clock Eastern time, and I go make sure I go in and collect my credits and put them aside. Or you can set up to have a, a different levels of accounts in there. I have found I like it because I can test different styles and different models when I use Night Flick. Everything is right, Night Cafe, everything is right there. Great. As long as you can hear me, like I said, tech, it just adds your question in the. Let me go. I'm going back up. I'm multitasking here right now. Thanks. Oh, my pleasure. Now, and I always tell in, individuals who are just starting out, just go find something, just go in and just test them out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just go in and see what it generates. You come up with any words, I might want to put your name in. You might want to put who knows what in any topic, any data you put in there just to get a feel of the software. Yes, I definitely... <laughs> When I first started, I couldn't, I would not be getting any image that looks like that. Um, 
uh, when I first started, it was you hardly could recognize the facial structures of the medical laboratory scientists when I would put the term in. So even as I think I started, this is 2003, I think I started using and did some beta tests. I think I started using in 2001, 2020, uh, 2021 or 2022 time flies. But when I first, my first laboratory scientists, I go, oh, that's not going to work. Uh, but I've seen over just this short a time, uh, it has they have really fine tuned the images, the each each generation of a version of um, software that comes out, uh, not so algorithms come out. It's more fine tuned. So I see myself definitely using it more to as we target young um, men and women, especially young women, to get into STEMs. And that way we can show them what we want them to see, um, especially in the laboratory. I can go through with the laboratory. This young, the only thing with that particular one, that particular slide was one of four. Now, some um, applications will give you four slides, and you pick and choose the ratio that you want. But that's why you need to stay updated, check the information, and see what you're going to get from for that particular platform. But I was one of four of the four. And I usually do, I usually do a couple. So I know I'm going to get at least couple, uh, at least four. I want to get at least four good ones out of it I can use. But I look at go, oh, wait a minute, the microscope, the eyepieces are too far apart. That's little things you have to need to check. You should be able to check. So I'm looking forward to the fine tuning, the real time, real, real time tune, uh, real time uh, image creation in the future. It keeps getting better each day. And thank you very much for having me here today. It was my pleasure to, to share with you today. Okay, so thank uh, thanks very much. And um, we can move over to the um, uh, little party area we have. Uh, if uh, things want to happen uh, beyond this, if we have more questions, time for a little gathering. And uh, I'll just put that in the text as well.